welcome back to Nails Before Films. It's your favorite disgrace to society here with another movie review. I'll be reviewing Venom 3 today, which is definitely not a great movie, but it sure is fun if you don't think too much about it. I know the Venom movies are a weird bunch, there's no Spider-Man, they're in their own universe, and the movies themselves aren't exactly high quality. But I find them enjoyable, I really liked the first Venom and even rewatched it multiple times. I didn't enjoy the second one as much, the story wasn't as interesting, but it wasn't terrible either. I'm happy to say that Venom The Last Dance follows the tradition of not great, but at least it's fun. Let's get into it. The movie starts by bringing Eddie and Venom back to their own universe, which made me wonder why even brought them to the MCU for No Way Home in the first place. Just for that few seconds of cameo, it's kind of a shame that we never get to see Spider-Man with Venom. But then again, this version of Venom is more of a hero. I don't know how it's gonna work with Spidey, so whatever, I guess. Anyway, Eddie is wanted for the death of the police from Venom 2, so he decides to travel to New York and get someone to clear his name for him. However, on their way there, they're attacked by a generic alien creature sent by the creator of Symbiotes. Turns out the Symbiotes trapped their creator, a generic space villain, a long time ago and he needs a Codex to be freed. For some reason, a Codex is formed when a Symbiote revives its host which Venom did back in the first movie. It is so random and makes no sense. Whatever gets the movie going, I guess. And the Codex is only visible to the generic alien creature when Venom is in his full form, which is also convenient. You'd think, okay, then everything will be fine if Venom stays put, right? Eddie can still use part of his power and Venom can even poke his head out from time to time. So what's the problem? But the movie won't happen if they are so reasonable. So do they put Eddie in a dire situation that Venom has to be in his full form? That would make sense, right? Nope, they don't do that either. I kid you not, Venom gets into his full form so that he can dance with Mrs. Chan. I'm serious, he decides dancing with Mrs. Chan to a remix version of Dancing Queen is more important than the safety of the universe. Yes, it's even dumber than it sounds, but it sure is hilarious. This movie is filled with what the fudge moments and this is the most what the fudge of them all. It's the perfect example of how laughably bad Venom 3 is on purpose and it shouldn't be taken seriously. I can't even be angry at them because it's obvious they know how stupid it is but still went, fudge it, we're gonna make them dance. Anyway, Eddie and Venom are then captured and separated by the military and brought to Area 55 where they study symbiotes. Unsurprisingly, the generic alien creature follows them there and the symbiotes have to work with the humans to defeat it. But the generic alien creature calls some more generic alien creatures and Venom sacrifices himself to kill them. And his death also destroys the Codex. I have so many problems with this. First of all, why do all of the symbiotes help Venom and Eddie? Shouldn't they just kill Eddie? That's the most surefire way to keep their creator locked up. One of the symbiotes even tells the military guy that killing either Eddie or Venom would destroy the Codex. So I thought that was their plan. And why do they suddenly want to help humans? The symbiotes wanted to devour the entire planet in the first movie. Why do they suddenly care about human lives? And there are way too many characters who don't need to be there. For example, why bring back the police from Venom 2? He doesn't do anything other than spew out exposition. They can literally get one of the scientists to bond with a symbiote and it wouldn't make any difference. Teddy's backstory about her brother and getting hit by lightning doesn't really have any importance. She just bonds with a symbiote with super speed in the end. The Christmas scientist does have some plot influence, but I don't understand why they don't just combine her character with Teddy. The movie's tone is all over the place. Eddie and Venom are more comedic and campy, like two friends on a whimsical adventure. But the Area 55 parts are overly serious in a movie that's not supposed to be taken seriously. They're not interesting and often just repeat what Venom has already told us. Thankfully, the Area 55 stuff isn't the bulk of the movie. The main focus of Venom 3 is still Eddie, Venom, and their last adventure together. 
Their dynamic is still fun to watch. They are like two best friends or an old couple who argue all the time but care about each other deeply. Eddie and Venom's relationship has always been the highlight of these movies. It's fun and even a bit touching to see them eventually become an integral part of each other's lives, both figuratively and physically. Seeing them part in the end is actually a bit sad, especially when the last thing Venom does is protect Eddie. However, it's not enough to make me cry because this is a superhero movie. You know Venom won't be actually dead in case they need to make more. And I was right, just when I was wondering what happened to the guy from the bar, the after credits show him climbing out of the rubble and a cockroach Venom. It does undermine Venom's sacrifice, but it's expected. Besides, I actually think that scene is pretty clever because it uses elements from the movie itself. The military didn't just take the Mexican bar guy for no reason, and Teddy didn't mention cockroaches for no reason. Another nice addition to Venom 3 is actually the hippie family. I didn't like them at first, I thought their presence was random and out of place. They were probably just comic relief and won't make any difference to the story. But I was wrong. They turn out to be a really nice family and are actually useful to the plot. It's convenient that Eddie just so happens to run into them, but I really like the time he spends with the family. Even though the space oddity scene is corny, it's a sweet heartfelt moment in an otherwise wacky movie. Because Anne isn't around anymore, it's nice to see Eddie and Venom making some friends and they aren't alone on their journey. The family doesn't have a backstory like Teddy, but they are so much more likable because they feel like a real family. The hippie parents, cynical emo teenage daughter, naive youngest son, hippie van, and pet dog, they really seem like regular nice people who just so happen to be alien enthusiasts. Another thing I also appreciate about the Venom movies is the runtime. They're all under two hours, they never outstay their welcome, and I was never bored when watching. Anyway, the action is still pretty good, it's mostly CGI as before, but it still looks pretty cool. It's a bit too over the top how many symbiotes there are in the final fight and they don't even get introduced, but it's pretty fun to see the different symbiotes and their abilities. It's also cool to see different Venom creatures. There's Venom horse, Venom fish, Venom frog, etc, etc. I feel like they know people are here to see Venom, so they shove as much as they can in this movie. And I think it's at least fun. There's also some sort of gore in this one. The generic alien creatures eat people and symbiotes, and blood sprays from the back of their heads. It's a shame that Venom movies are not R-rated. They don't even really show people dying in the second movie, but at least this one dares to be slightly edgier. That's basically my thoughts on Venom The Last Dance. The writing is in no way good, it's just plots loosely strung together to make the story happen, but it's fun to watch. When it's bad, it's usually hilariously bad. I watched this in a pretty packed theater and everyone seemed to be having a good time. No one laughed out loud, but you could hear chuckles throughout the whole movie. Personally, I still like the first Venom the most. The villain of the first movie is the most interesting out of the trilogy, and it's a pretty good origin story. Most superhero origins show us how a regular person deals with having powers, but Eddie not only has to get used to having powers, he has to get used to sharing his body with an alien, and that makes Venom a pretty unique movie. However, I certainly like The Last Dance way more than That There Be Carnage. It's a nice conclusion to the story of Eddie and Venom, and it's very enjoyable to watch. Hope you guys like my review and Venom Nails. This is the logo with Venom's black goo, this is Venom's toothy grin, these two are his eyes, and this one is, of course, his tongue. I had a lot of fun with this set, I get to use a lot of sculpting gel for the 3D effects. And I'm pretty proud of the outcome. As always, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, comment, share, do what you want. Follow me on other social media if you like, links are in the description. Keep nailing it and happy Halloween people, hope you get chocolate like Venom.